DJI gets a lot of praise for its Osmo Action camera series, but what a lot of people forget is that DJI also makes another range of small, content capturing devices. The Pocket series started way back in 2018 when the original Osmo Pocket was released, followed by the Pocket 2 in 2020. These tiny devices paired a compact three-axis gimbal with an equally small camera for a handheld video option that was perfect for vlogging. So with the Pocket 3 breaking cover, what exactly is new? And is this latest option even worth the upgrade from the original Pocket or Pocket 2? Time to find out. First things first, as ever, no freebies here. I spent my own money on this, so no need to worry there. You know, in a way, the success of DJI's action cameras sort of stole the thunder from the Pocket series, but I think the launch of the Pocket 3 may go a long way to swing the needle back. So first things first, what is the biggest difference between the action camera and the Pocket 3? Well, the latest Action 4 is a super tough action camera that can survive pretty much anything and relies on electronic stabilization to give you smooth footage. The Pocket 3 uses a mechanical stabilization gimbal to provide smooth footage so it isn't as sturdy, but as most people prefer the look of mechanical stabilization rather than electronic, it has the edge in this department. Here's the thing, both options are great to capture content on the move and are small and practical, which will greatly appeal to vloggers and YouTubers. In this video, we're going to see exactly what the Pocket 3 can do, but we'll also compare it to both the original Osmo Pocket, just to see how much of an upgrade this version is, and we'll also look sideways and compare the Pocket 3 to the Action 4. The Pocket 3 uses an f2 max aperture lens that serves up an equivalent 20mm focal length. Perhaps the biggest headline about the Pocket 3 is the sensor, which is much bigger than previous models. In fact, it uses a 1 inch CMOS sensor, up from 1 over 1.7 on the older Pocket 2, so users should see a big hike in video quality. This lens can of course shoot horizontal footage, but you can also capture vertical footage too, which will be perfect for those videographers who share more of their work on platforms like Instagram and TikTok. When it comes to resolution, the Pocket 3 tops out at 4K 120p, which is actually the same as the Action 4, so both devices can provide some incredibly high resolution footage to create from. As the name suggests, the Pocket 3 offers a compact form factor, but I do have to say it has been bulking up at the gym, and the Pocket 3 is a lot bigger than the original Osmo Pocket. That said, it still weighs in at 179 grams and can easily slip into your pocket and be carried around all day. Another big headline is the rotating 2-inch touch sensitive LCD, which shifts from a vertical to horizontal depending on which format you wish to record. In fact, you can turn on the unit by just flicking the LCD into horizontal mode, which is a nice and quick action. The Pocket 3 comes with a protective case, and I went for the standard combo, which includes an extra attachment, so you can attach the device to a tripod, and there's a USB-C connection to charge that up to a power bank. All of the features are very DJI, very well thought out and well engineered. The Pocket 3 includes 10-bit D-Log and HLG HDR, which will give videographers more tolerance to edit the footage in post-processing and get the most from both the colors in the scene and the shadows and highlights that were available. This is a scene shot in standard profile. And here it is in D-Log and then in HLG. It's worth pointing out that although the Action 4 does include 10-bit D-Log, it falls short and doesn't offer the HLG profile that the Pocket 3 does. The key to the smooth footage captured by the Pocket 3 is that 3-axis mechanical gimbal, and this can be fine-tuned to suit your taste. There are three gimbal options available. Follow mode is suitable for most general work and will suit vlogs or selfies. Tilt lock is the one to use if you're shooting a lateral movement or push-pull footage, as in this mode the camera will maintain the lens at being absolutely horizontal. And lastly there's FPV, which allows the lens to float around and follow the motion of the gimbal, and this is best used in more creative settings. I think I'll stick to um, the first two modes if I'm completely honest. Take a look at the Pocket 3 and you'll see it has three microphones to capture audio, but this doesn't tell the whole story of sound, as it can also work with a number of external devices. 
One announcement that went slightly under the radar was the launch of the DJI Mic 2, which pairs automatically with the Pocket 3 and comes included with the Creator Combo, which I couldn't afford. The original DJI mic will also work, but you have to plug in the receiver into the USB-C connection at the bottom of the unit. What's more, if you have an external accessory like a hot shoe mic, this will also work via USB-C connection. When it comes to autofocus, this is an area of huge improvement and the Pocket 3 uses DJI's ActiveTrack 6.0. There's face auto detect and dynamic framing which will help you capture impressive compositions while working single crude, perfect for vloggers. The face detect feature in particular works really well. Here's some footage of me moving around in the frame, trying but failing to shake off that sticky face detection. Of less importance to me is the Glamour Effect 2.0 technology. I mean, just try that for yourself, but I guess, you know, others may find value in that feature. Backing up the Pocket 3 is the DJI Mimo app, which helps you pair and activate the Pocket 3 when you first use it, and also acts as a remote monitor so you can access features and record through your smartphone, along with being able to preview footage. Another important feature is the battery specifications. Amazingly, the Pocket 3 can be charged from 0 to 80% in just 16 minutes. That's three times faster charging than the older Pocket 2. On a full charge and shooting full HD video, you can get 166 minutes of operating time, but this does drop to 116 minutes when you're shooting 4K 60p video. In terms of sensor quality, yep, yeah, fair play DJI. The Pocket 3 produces the best picture from any handheld DJI device, and the low light mode works especially well. This is me walking under a canopy of trees at last light, and actually the, the video quality is really good. A few additional things to be aware of is that snap-on filters from the original Osmo Pocket won't fit, the lens is just much bigger. The Pocket 3 shoots stills photos of course, and you can choose from JPEG or RAW file format, or you can shoot both at once. But the still size of 9.4 megapixels obviously isn't huge, so this is primarily a video device rather than for photos. What bothers me about the Pocket 3? What could be improved? Well, a few things actually. For example, I would have liked to have seen some sort of internal ND filters to help control exposure, especially in bright conditions. Also, if you plan on taking the Pocket 3 out all day, you will need to bring out a power bank as well to charge the battery up. It will charge fast, but it will need charging. And actually, I don't like the design of the protective carry case as much as the original Osmo Pocket. Okay, here's my verdict. What do I think of the Pocket 3? Well, I'm a massive fan of DJI's action cameras, and I actually own all four iterations of them, so it was going to take a lot to win me over. However, the Pocket 3 is an absolute beast and makes creating interesting videos really easy. Okay, I wouldn't risk the Pocket 3 in situations where it may get soaked or bumped. That's where the Action 4 really shines. What's more, the Pocket 3 is expensive and costs more than the Action 4. I love the additional modes like the spin shot mode and of course there's time lapse too. And this device definitely enables content creators to increase the production values of their footage, especially when shooting single crude. Yes, it's definitely worth upgrading if you own either the original Osmo Pocket or the Pocket 2. And the DJI Pocket 3 can be a companion, but not a replacement for the Action 4. Given the cost of the camera, I bit the bullet and I paid an extra 35 euros for the DJI Care Refresh package, so that if the camera does become damaged, I can get a replacement at an affordable price. But what do you think of the DJI Pocket 3? Is this something you'd be looking to add to your gear bag? Let me know in the comments and remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.